let's look at let's look at Isaiah. Go meet Isaiah. Um, let's go ahead and, and dismiss the children also, and uh, let's go ahead and, and as you're teaching the children by faith, Hallelujah, teaching them. Be excited. Be encouraged. Faith is still at work. Hi, guys. Yeah, go with your teacher. Go with your teacher. Amen. Hallelujah. Go with me to Isaiah, the 41st chapter. Hallelujah. It's quite interesting that... Uh, that today, being of all days, is to celebrate uh, the 14 years that God has given us. Even in faith, that you stand in faith. In Isaiah 41, verses 17, this is actually the scripture that the Lord gave us when, when we were just asking God, God... Um, Help us understand what you would have us do in the city. Coming to the city knowing no one, just hearing a word from the Lord and trusting that word and staying with it until he says different. You know, uh, we don't move until he says different. If we don't hear what he says, then we stay upon that first word, what he said. A lot of people are think of that God's changed his mind and so no you just stay with what you what you heard and stay there until he says something different it says when the poor and needy seek water and there is none and their tongue faileth for thirst I the Lord will hear them and I the God of Israel will for, not forsake them verses 18 and, and this is where um the revelation of this came. I will open rivers and high places and fountains in the midst of the valley. And I will make the wilderness a pool of water. And the dry land springs of water. So let's stop here for a moment. This is it right here. This is the scripture that we lay hold of. That he in turn is bringing us to an oasis. A place that's fertile. A place that's green. It's a desert garden, a watering place, a deserted place that has a resting place, but also a retreat, a sanctuary. Amen. And that is so neat. That's where we got the, uh, we are a place of refreshing in a dry and thirsty world. And that's what's so excited about this is that I myself also find myself just get encouraged by the word. I, I, I draw strength from the word. And you find the refreshing. That is where, what it's all about, the refreshing of His Word. You know, in this land that we live, in this life that we live, well, I tell you what, you can easily get drained. You can easily get exhausted by the world. You can literally be parched, dry. And that's where uh, you start drifting from that durability of what God gives us or the strength that He gives us. Amen. And it's quite interesting that if you look at verses, if you look at verses uh, 19, I will plant. Look at that word, I will plant. This is, this is, this is not your pastor planting people, it's God. All God needs is someone to be available so that he can bring them to that watering place so that he can plant. I will plant them. And then he talks about seven trees. Um, the seven trees are, mean so much that he will plant. And we'll discuss that later on. But I want you to see something. He always uses allegories. And one of the things that I notice about Jesus is, is in God that they use allegories in everything that they talk about. There was a story that Jesus gave we won't turn there for the sake of uh, time and looking at other scripture. There was a story that there was a blind man in a particular city. Jesus could do no miracles in the city because they were all hard. So he pronounced, he lifted the blessing from that city. 
And when God lifts a blessing, then what's available is the curse. And the curse came in, which caused dryness, uh, poverty, sickness. But there was a man that was coming out of the city, and uh, he was blind. Jesus reached over to him, laid hands on him. But the thing that's so interesting, he laid hands on him twice. Never in the Bible do you see Jesus laying hands on someone twice. It's usually first time miracle. But this time he gives us uh, uh, an allegory. He gives us an example. He touched the man's eyes. And Jesus asked the man, what do you see? He didn't say, go thy way, thy faith has made you whole. He says, what do you see? And the man said something quite interesting. And this is where the allegory is. This is where the power of that. He says, I see men as trees. Now notice this. This is a city that Jesus left and pronounced, lifted the blessing so the curse came. So he said, what do you see? I see men as trees. And then the Bible says he put his hand on his eyes and the man saw clearly and followed Jesus. Now the thing about the allegory here or him seeing men as trees, in the Bible, God always represents the word to a people and he calls them trees. Trees. Jesus said later on in Luke, a, a, a tree will be known by its fruit. And you can't have a tree produce wrong fruit. It has to produce good fruit. So he uses this allegory again about trees. So in other words, if you understand, in our lives, we are like trees. Yeah, we're human, but a tree represents something. A tree represents strength, durability, height, but also the thing that we see in a tree produces fruit. And that's what he sees. He sees trees that will produce fruit. And then he says, by the tree, you shall know the fruit of that tree. And so with that in mind, let's look at some scriptures here. And uh, let's, let's look, first of all, at Proverbs, the fourth chapter. And we're talking about the oasis, a place of refreshing. The oasis, a, a watering place. But he says in Proverbs, the fourth chapter, in verses 18, and, and let me read it to you, from the New Living Translation, it says, The way of the righteous is like the first gleam of dawn, which shines even brighter unto the full light of day. Now notice what it says in another translation. The road the righteous travel is like a sunrise getting brighter and brighter until the day light has come. So in other words, excuse me. So in other words, it is he that puts you on a righteous path. It is he. If we will maintain a path that he has for us, every step along the way on that path, your day becomes brighter and brighter. Are you with me, church? In other words, when you stay on the path of God, then your path becomes brighter and brighter like the morning sun. Now, I remember... When I first got saved, I was limited to understand certain things. But the more that I stayed on the path of righteousness, I found out that I'm getting stronger. I'm understanding more. I'm growing. I'm becoming durable. I'm becoming a person now that understands the fruit that comes out of my life for serving Jesus. What happens on that path, you stay on a path designed by God. And it is the path, if you stay on that path, you will be planted of the Lord. You will be. You will gain 
the, the planting of the Lord. But along that path, you have to stay on that path. Now notice this. That's what I love about the Lord. He, he puts us on this path. Amen. Now I want you to see something. Go with me to Isaiah 61 now. Isaiah 61 I want to stay on that path. I want to stay on the path that God has for me because I'm gonna, it's going to get brighter and brighter. I can get off the path, but once I get off the path, then I, I, I recognize it's not going to get brighter. And many of us get off paths. Many of us don't stay on a path simply because, well, maybe it's, it, it's too long of a path. Maybe it's too narrow. Maybe there's too much rocks on this path. Or maybe, but if you'll stay on that path, there's a purpose for that path. Notice what it says in Isaiah 61, verses 3. Hallelujah. Amen. Talking about the trees. Notice what it says. And this is Jesus speaking in verses 1. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. For God has anointed me to preach the gospel. Verses 2 to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. But this is what I want you to see. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, the church. The church is Zion. Those that are going through things. Those that are mourning. To appoint unto them that mourn. To give unto them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Now here it is right here. That they might be called. Now look at it again. Trees of righteousness. Now here, here we have to stay with it. Trees of righteousness. The planting. Look at it again. The planting of. Of the Lord that he might altogether be glorified. See the purpose that God has for you so that he will get the glory. That's the purpose of us staying on a path. That he gets the glory. So in other words, he knows if you go through mourning, he's going to turn it around. He knows if you go through sorrow, he's going to turn it around. But either way, he calls you the planting of the Lord. His planting. He plants us like the tree that is planted by the Lord, that he may get the glory. Now notice this, going back to Jesus when he saw this, when he saw this blind man, all that was, and if we miss it, we're going to say, well, you know what? He couldn't see clearly. So he was saying, I see men as trees. No, 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 no. Because once Jesus lays hands on you, you see clearly. But this was a setting. This was a, a setting that God was giving us revelation that this man saw into the supernatural. He says, I see men like trees. That's the way God sees us. God sees us like trees. He doesn't see you like a weed that's going to be bending. Although he has, he has care for you. But he sees you as a tree to the fullest. Amen. Trees that are grown strong and, and tall. Listen to this. Uh, Think about, think about Christianity. Think about your walk with Jesus. You take baby steps, baby steps. You learn, you learn, you grow, you grow, and you're becoming more mature. You're becoming more mature. But all that process, all that process took time, doesn't it? You just don't grow like a tree overnight. Think about it. I, I got some little bitty trees in my backyard that they still... I'm saying grow faster. You're, you've been there five years already. I can still see the top of you. Grow faster. But I'm telling you something. That, like Christine said, there's something more than that tree that you see. It's more in the foundation that that's God is building, right? And so think about it. He sees us as trees. Can you say amen? I, I love that about the Lord. He's, he's the planter. He's the planter. Now I want you to see something. In this, if you'll go back to Psalms 1. Let's look at Psalms 1. And that's why it's so important to be planted by God. It's so important. It's so important to be planted. A palm tree, if you'll see the grandeur of a palm tree, it sticks, it bends, it doesn't break in the storm. It stays in the storm, doesn't it? If you see these oak trees, now, you know, we had a storm not too long ago that uprooted a lot of trees, but these trees st stood for many years. Think about it, hundreds of years. It took a very powerful storm to knock those that we saw just a couple weeks ago. But you know, you think about a tree, the durability of it, the strength of it. I, I think about trees whenever I walk in the forest or whenever we go walking at, uh, at that park. We see these trees that Christine will always ask me, wow, how long has that tree been here? I said, honey, that tree's probably been here since the start of our, our country, before Oklahoma was ever, was ever birthed. 
you know. Uh, stability, strength. Now that tree, that little oak just, just didn't grow like that overnight. It, it just didn't happen so fast. It took time. It took time. And this is what God is doing in our walk. He's making us grow, but yet it's all up to us. It's up to us how we desire His, His food. In this case, water. It's up to us how we desire to be in His presence. It's up to us if, uh, that if we want to step more into His presence, more into... You know, I, I encourage uh, us, church, that, that we just desire more of God. And we don't settle for, this is it. We settle for more God. God, we want revival. We want awakening. I want revival in me, I, in my circumference, my perimeters. I want revival in me, Lord. I, I change me, God. Change me for the better. Uh, you know, see, see, if we will desire change, and he'll do it. And that's what, that's what uh, I believe the Oasis is, is here for a purpose is so that we can draw from Him and get stronger from Him and, and do away with all our pettiness, do away with all our emotions, do away with what we think, do away with what I think this and this. If we'll just come to worship the Lord and honor Him as a, as a, as a one body, understanding God. You know what I'm talking about? One of the greatest tools the enemy uses is me, 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 me. And when you use me, 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 God can't use that. And so if we can just say, God, it's not about me. It's not about me or my two or three or four. It's about you, God. I want to honor you. And if God will, will take that with a real yes, sir, then we can do much for the kingdom of God. Can you say amen? Much for the kingdom of God. Amen. Now, I want you to see something. Go with me to, uh, let's look at something. Oh, gosh, there's so many. Go with me to Psalms. Remember, we said Psalms 1, right? Do you see that? I want you to see this. Put your beautiful eyes on her. Amen. Hallelujah. Psalms 1. Blessed is the man, verse 1, that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sitteth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law, which is the word, doth he meditate day and night. Now notice this, and he shall be like a tree, there it is again, planted by the rivers of the water, that bringeth forth this fruit in its season or in its time, his leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall he prosper. So in other words, if we will recognize that if we will be planted in the place that God has for us and grow there, grow there, be fed the word, understand the word, know the word, be excited about the things of God, know that he's doing it, hallelujah, amen. You see, that's where you grow, that's where you grow. Think about it, every time when we allow God to plant us, as we're talking about, then he knows our growth, he knows what we need. Can you say amen? Look at your neighbor and say amen, hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, you're a tree, <laughs> you're a tree, so I'm going to be planted. I'm going to be planted in where he wants me to grow. I'm going to be planted. He's going to plant me. He's going to water me. He's going to do it because I'm going to grow to become the tree of righteousness. Can you say hallelujah? There's another one. I like this one in Psalms 52. Look at Psalms 52. Hallelujah. Psalms 52. And uh, verses, verses 8. Psalms 52, verses 8. I am like a green olive tree. Now, don't, don't, don't. Forget about who you are. I am a green olive tree. Olive represents the anointing. I'm an anointing. I have an anointing. I have an anointing. I've been planted by God. God has anointed me. I am like the green olive tree in the house of God. Where, where is it? Again, in the house of God. Are you with me, guys? In the house of God. In the house of God. Where is this anointing? In the house of God. So in other words, we are trees planted by God anointed of God to grow, to become trees of righteousness, but now in the house of God. In the house of God. Can you agree with me that the house of God is a place that has a lot of olive trees? Can you agree with me? Can you agree with me? It's the house of God that has a lot of plants, plants that are growing to become future trees. In the house of God, there's a lot of trees that are coming. There's a lot of people that are just getting ready to grow more. God is using you. Fruits are producing. Oh, yeah, you know, there's a lot of fruit that has to come off so that good fruit can produce. You know what I'm talking about? It's the planting of God, right? So in the house, there's that anointing in the house. My anointing is best used in the house. Your anointing is best used in the house. 
our anointing is best used in the house, not apart from the house. So if you will, if you will think with me, think about it. Enemy doesn't like the house of God. Can you say amen? Can you be realistic with me? Have you ever noticed, uh, you know, uh, this morning we got about maybe three phone calls, three texts about why I should not be in church today. Amen. In every one of them, I think, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, the anointing, the anointing, the anointing, the anointing, the anointing. Amen. You see, you see, this is where we have to recognize the anointing. So I have an anointing and it's in the house of God that it grows. You see, it's in the house of God. And so I'm excited about that. I'm excited, you know, when, when I come to the house of God. I'm excited when, when, when we see the anointing working. I'm excited when each one is bearing fruit. I'm excited when, when we're all working together to see the anointing. But also, I have to stay in faith a lot. You have to stay in faith a lot. Come on, church. Amen. Like this morning, we're in faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, church. Amen. It's a full house. Amen. It's a full house. Come on, I'm being real with you. Amen. It's a full house. Jesus loves a house that's full. Hallelujah. Amen. It's a full house in Jesus' name. Amen. What am I doing? Speaking faith. But reality here in the lowest form is the enemy doesn't like the house to have its anointing. That's the bottom fact. So therefore, it's up to me to make a breakthrough in my life to be in the house of God. It's up to me to make a breakthrough. It's up to every individual. You know that? Every individual. It's up to every individual to get strong in the Lord. It's up to every individual to get in that word. It's up to every individual to get closer to God. But now, it's in the house of God that the anointing is increased. It's in the house. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Come on, church. Can you say amen? Say with me, amen. Hallelujah. Look at Psalms 92. Look at Psalms 92. <laughs> Hallelujah, amen. Psalms 92, verses 13. Those that be planted. Those. Now, now, now there's, there's singling, they're singling out right now. There's, there's, he's talking about particular ones. Particular ones. Those that be planted in the house of God. Listen to this. Go ahead, look at it again. Those that be planted in the house of God shall flourish in the courts of our God. Look at it again. Shall flourish. It, it, just, it just confirms with what we just read. In his house, those that allow themselves to be planted shall flourish. Flourish means grow, produce, become strong, durable in the courts of God. Now think about the courts of God. This, this is more than just a, his dwelling place. It's, there's more involved here. There's so much more. See, God's a, 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 he's a big God. He's a big God and, and there's so much involved there. And so this is where the excitement is about God. It, it's, notice folks, it's not about how we feel. It, it, I feel like being in church, it's not about how we feel. It's about the command of God. Being in the house of God. It's not about what I feel. You know, do you know something? Today, you can have a toothache in the house of God. And if we focus on the toothache, you'll miss the word of God. So what do we do? What do we do when we have a toothache? We come to the house of God in faith, rebuke the pain, Say, Father, I thank you that this pain doesn't touch me. I thank you that I will hear the word of the Lord. And guess what? You're focused on the word. See what's happening? You yourself are getting yourself built up in that word. You see? So in other words, it's not about feeling. It's not about how I feel to be in church. It's not about, well, today, you know, I'm so glad I got $1,000 yesterday. I'm going to be in the house of God today. It, it's not about that. It's not about, well, you know, I got a good job Monday and I'm going to be in the house on Sunday. It's not about that. It's about being in the house uh, all of the days of your life. Come on, church. Amen. Uh, are y'all with me? In the house of God all the days of your life. Hallelujah. Amen. And so when I think about the Oasis 14 years, um, 14 years of going at it every Sunday and every Wednesday. 14 years. 14 years of, 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 of messages that have come out of this pulpit. 14 years of 
of, of the word in us. I think about that. I think, God, how, so, how, how great are you, God, that, that you speak to us? It's not about feelings. It's about faith. Faith in God. Think about faith in God. We, we stay in faith. Say with me, amen. We stay in faith. And so when we're in faith, it's about me and God in faith. Doesn't matter who is saying amen or who's not saying amen. It's about me and God. I'm learning. I'm growing. I'm growing. I'm growing. Come on, Drew. Can you say amen? I'm growing in the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. If we can walk away with just a little today and say, it's me, God, that you're growing. It's me that today I'm growing to become stronger for your glory. If we'll just be believe that instead of the feeling or what we think or what this, you know, it, it's amazing. Uh, the, the articles and the books and the things that have been said about, about how to do things greater. But I'll tell you what, one of the greatest things to do is step into the Word of God. Step in the Word of God. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Look at, look at the next verse. Uh, verses 13, it says, those of you planted the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Verses 14, they shall, still, they shall still bring forth fruit in old age. Old age, they'll bring fruit. And they shall be fat and flourishing. Amen. Oh, I love that. I love that about the Lord. Amen. I love that about God. I love that. That, you know, as long as we tarry with the Lord, we're going to be in the house of the Lord. How many people are excited to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. I'm excited. Amen. I'm excited. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's get excited about being in the house of God. Amen. Now think about those four trees. Think about those four trees. In fact, go back to where was it? You that found out where we were? Isaiah 61. 41. Isaiah 41. Excuse me. Go, go with me to Isaiah 41. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Isaiah 41. Verses, verses 19. Now notice this. I will plant in the wilderness the cedar, the shitta tree, the myrtle, the olive tree. I will set in the desert the fir tree, the pine, the box tree together that they may see and know and consider and understand together that the hand of the Lord has done this and the Holy One of Israel hath created it. That gives me encouragement. It, it gives me encouragement that He has done this. So in other words, in this house, we have trees. Let's look at these trees for a moment real quickly. The, the cedar, the cedar symbolizes, it, it notices, it, it symbolizes strength. You're, you're a tree that God plants in a house and He causes it to be a cedar tree it is, it is a symbol of strength. It's a symbol of durability. It, it, it's for toughness. And notice this, as a pastor, this is a person that comes and is not moved by flimsy things. It, it's solid. It, it's a cedar. It, it, it's durable. It's solid. And as a pastor, this kind of tree is a beautiful tree to be among, uh, that, that you can be among. Because what it does is you see this person or those persons or that man or this woman is a solid person all the way. Does it matter? Solid. So in other words, it could be the planting of a cedar among you. Can you say amen? And this is the one that I, I enjoy. Look at the next one. It's the shittim. Shittim. Can you see that shittim? Now notice this. This tree is God's carrier. And, and these are literally... Things that God spoke in the Bible, we don't have time to go into, but the Shittim tree is literally a carrier of God's presence. And the altar in the, in the, in the wilderness was made from this. The pillar that, Sam, uh, Sam, uh, uh, that, that King David prepared for his son made, was made out of these. Can you say amen? Now notice this, notice this. This Shittim also was, was, was made the bars that held the, 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 the tabernacle of God. It's amazing, you know, that the Ark of the Covenant. You couldn't touch the Ark of the Covenant, but the only thing that could touch the Ark of the Covenant was this Shittim pole, this, these poles that were available. It, it, it's the anointed. It's the carrier of the anointing. So I think about it. In the house, God can use you as a carrier of greater anointing. In the house of God, you can flourish that God can bring greater giftings in you for the house. A carrier of God's glory. Come on, church. You, 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 know, you know, as a pastor, you can sense people that come to the house of God that have anointing. You can sense it. And you can sense those that are just pillars. You can sense those that are strong durability. You can sense those. But the thing that's so beautiful about all this that we've talked about, they're all needed in the house of God. Amen. Wherever you may be, 
this is what God may have in you. Amen. Let's look at some more trees. Let's look at the myrtle. The myrtle uh, was, was also uh, in the tabernacle of the wilderness. This particular tree here. The myrtle. Uh, it's a beautiful piece of wood here. But the thing about it was God talked about it. The fir is an emblem of, uh, of authority. Emblem of nobility. Think about it. Authority and nobility. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's what's needed in the tree. The pine tree. Oh, the pine tree. We, we lived in Texas. We had a lot of pine trees. They're evergreen everywhere filled 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 so tall and beautiful evergreen ever god never wanted to cut down an inter, a, a pine tree they were so beautiful so beautiful but there came bugs that came to eat them and, and these bugs you can literally hear them inside the tree you can stand by the tree and hear them and if you're not dealing with that tree or the bugs that those bugs literally will rot that tree out why it's because that tree Stands so tall, so beautiful. And we had some like 30-something trees all over our house that had, uh, you know, there were palm trees. We might have lost a few, but I remember going out there and rebuking them bugs. And, and those bugs had to leave. And, but the thing about it is I see, I see them so tall in the things of God. That's where God has also people that are in the house of God. Can you say amen? Oh, like pine trees, evergreen, filled, filled, listen to this, filled with the word of God. Oh, filled with the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And then, of course, the last tree is the olive tree. Or the, the, last to the second to the last is the olive tree. I, I like this one here also. Amen. Olive tree is just a carrier of the anointing. Represents anointing. Amen. And then we have the box tree. The box tree is special because we have a little box drum back there made out of that wood. It's a box tree. And that's where instruments were made. The most beautiful sounding instruments are made with some very good costly wood. And this was one. A lot of guitars are made with this beautiful, this, this box tree. Uh, very expensive. And you think about it. You think about it. They produce great sound. Amen. Now think about it. Great sound in the house of God. Durability in the house of God. Uh, people that are filled with the word of God in the house of God. People that have an anointing in the house of God. People that have a powerful, powerful durability of strength. Noble nobility in the house of God. You see, this is all part what God does in the house. And the enemy doesn't like that. The enemy doesn't want that to happen. So we see that God is building a church. Amen. Let's look at one more scripture and let's and let's 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 pray. Amen. Let's get excited for what God is doing. Amen. I want you to see something. Go with me to Matthew the 16th chapter. Years ago, my pastor would always preach on this and he would always talk about it and literally got into us. That I can literally hear my pastor say this. Matthew 16, listen to what it says in verse 18. I say unto thee that thou art Peter. And upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Peter got an awakening here. Peter here represents a small pebble. But he says upon this rock, which is a Petra, which is a solid rock, immovable rock, rock that is so huge, he says, I'm going to build my church. Now, this is the thing that we stay on. God is building a church. That's all it is. He's building a church. If he's building a church, then he's going to plant people in that church. So the thing that we have to recognize is he is planting he is doing, he is causing things to have. All we have to do is be available for him to work. All we have to do, we have to be available to work. Amen. So let's go ahead and stand up this morning, church. Amen. Be available for God in a greater way. Hallelujah. Amen. Let, let's, let's be available for him more. Hallelujah. Amen. If one can put a thousand to flight, two can put ten thousand to flight. And so in other words, if we draw strength together, coming to the house of God, you know, overcoming these little, little obstacles. And I call them little because really in God's presence, they're just little. If we will overcome those little obstacles and say, no, God is building a house. And I am planted in that house. And in that house, God is using me for his glory. Listen to this. If God is doing that, think about the blessing that you and I have simply by obeying what he does in our walk. Think about, uh, if, if God has called me to this house, now think about it. If God has called me to this house, then by golly, I'm going to step more into what God has for me. 
I'm going to move mountains by the word of God. I'm going to do everything I can in my part to build what he's doing in this house. And if that's what he called me to do, then that's where I'm going to settle and that's where I'm going to grow. And that's where I'm going to be excited about God. Hallelujah. Amen. And, and let's overcome all these petty things. I mean, you know, the reason why I keep saying pettiness is because that's all it is. And, you know, you hear people say, well, you know, I don't like the music. I don't like the way you preach. I don't like the way this. And I don't like this. If we'll just ignore that and say, no, God, you said it. I'm there, Father, for the long run in Jesus' name. See, churches are destroyed because of pettiness. People, churches are destroyed where people just don't like certain things. Amen. Then they'll spread that germ to somebody else and somebody else is discouraged. And by the time you know, that's how these other separations happen. That's how other plantings. And, and let me just say something. Whenever there's a house split, it's demonic. Demonic house splits are literally meant to destroy that. And then that spirit will go and continue to destroy others. I know people that are in split, in, in demonic splits. That that's all they do. And, and they say God's called them to help the church. No, God's, God doesn't call you to, to go split a church. God calls you to help a church. Amen. And so this is what we have to recognize. Uh, I pray against that all the time. I say, no, 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 devil. You're not going to come in this church and divide. Now, the thing that we have to understand something, each individual. Now, think about it. Each individual has a warfare. Each individual. Each one has to stay in faith. Each one has to pray. Each one has to be encouraged. And each one has to know the vulnerability that they, they may be in at that moment. If the enemy says, oh, you're not going to church today, instead of saying, uh, uh, yes, sir, say, no, sir, I'm going to church in Jesus' name. Why? Because, see, you're being planted in the house of God. Come on, church. Amen. Uh, and so we have to think about those things that we challenge, that we're into. Amen. Or is that, that challenge us all the time. You see what I'm saying? Can you say amen, church? Hallelujah. Father, we thank you that today we celebrate your goodness, Lord Jesus.